Hi, and welcome to this introductory video on creating materials for MakeHuman. My name is Joel Palmius, and I am the community manager for MakeHuman. In this video, I will explain what a material is in practice, as well as introduce a new tool, MakeSkin. During this explanation, I will show a few examples on how to create materials, including creating a new skin for a human. Before starting with the tutorial, I'd like to send my heartfelt thanks to the people who have signed up on Patreon. Seeing that people appreciate the project enough to send money gives me energy to keep on working in these strange times. The income from Patreon has now reached such a level that I have been able to buy a somewhat more fancy headset. This video is the first made with that headset, and I hope that the sound quality should have improved somewhat. But less talking and more modeling. Let's move onwards to what this video is about. The first question we can ask is, what is a material? There is nothing magic with the material. It is perhaps the simplest of the assets available to make human, and probably the one which is the easiest to understand. The file you can see in the image to the left here is a simple material for an asset which is available in the repository, the crude female t-shirt. Reading from the top, we can see that there is a name indicating what the material is for. Then we have settings for colors which are simple RGB values, specifies that floats between 0 and 1. Shininess is what in Blender terms would be roughness, and the material is opaque. Then we have a reference to an image file, which is used as an image texture for the colors of the clothing. In this case, it's somewhat superfluous, as it is plain white, but we'll use it later in the video for texture painting. Then there are a few lines, which we can safely skip for now, they are there to tweak how a material is drawn inside MacHuman, and will have no effect on how things look when exported to, for example, Blender. This is basically it. Pairing this with a piece of clothing will allow you to give that piece of clothing a specific look. In this very simple example, we have only used a small subset of the available settings, but if you look in the asset repositories, you will find that the vast majority of the materials are not more advanced than this. They basically consist of a reference to a diffuse texture paired with some settings for roughness and specularity. All in all, it would not be difficult to write such a very simple material file by hand. But as said, this was only a small subset of the available material settings. We will soon move onwards to the new tool, Make Skin. But before doing so, I would like to show you the most up-to-date reference on material settings. It is available in the Make Skin GitHub repository. Here you can find a compatibility matrix, and are also able to get more information about how a certain setting will behave in different contexts. While it is possible to code material files by hand, it is cumbersome and also unnecessary. Since a few months back, the new MakeSkin tool is available for creating materials. In practice, it is implemented as a Blender plugin. What it does is that it provides a panel with buttons for creating, saving and loading materials. When reading a image mat file, it translates that to a node setup. And when writing a material file, it parses the node setup for the selected object and translates it to an image mat. Let's start with creating something very simple. The first goal is to create a different color for the t-shirt. I won't demonstrate how to import or export characters in this video, as it is shown elsewhere. But here I have simply imported the character we saw in the image earlier. We'll start with deleting the existing material, as we intend to create a new one. Then we will go to the Make Skin panel to create a new material. As we don't intend to use an image texture here, we make sure that this checkbox is unticked. In the shading panel, we can see that a simple node setup has been created for us. Let's change the color and roughness a bit. Back in the Make Skin panel, we will untick the Lit Sphere checkbox for now. The reason is that Lit Sphere shading works best when there is an image texture, 
and things will look strange in MacHuman if you combine a piece of clothing without a diffuse texture with a lit sphere texture. Then we save the new material in the same directory as the piece of clothing we want to use it together with. In MacHuman we can now go to the material panel. Here we first make sure that the relevant piece of clothing is selected. And we can see and select the new material in the right panel. Now, what we can notice here is that the rendering in MacHuman isn't the same as in Blender. Blender is a 3D modeling suit with very fancy rendering and lighting. MacHuman only renders a rough outline of how things might look in a 3D studio. Thus, you should not be discouraged that things might look a bit rough around the edges in MacHuman. If someone uses your material and exports a character to Blender, things will look as expected there. But let's step things up a bit. A material with a single plane color makes for boring clothes. Let's instead make a somewhat more interesting diffuse texture for the clothing. First, we remove the existing material. Then we re-import the default material for the clothing. As you may remember, it had a plain white texture already assigned. We can reuse that for painting on. Taking a look in the shading panel, we can see that there is a normal image texture hooked to a mix RGB node. The reason for this setup is that MakeHuman supports applying both a diffuse texture and a plain diffuse color. Here, we're keeping the mix factor at 1 though. That is, we use 100% of the texture and 0% of the diffuse color. In the texture paint panel, we find the texture that we intend to paint on. But let's save that to a separate file, so we don't overwrite the default texture. To make things more accessible, we'll add a mask to hide the parts that we don't want to paint on. Having assigned the vertices to a group, we can add a mask modifier to hide everything but those vertices in texture paint mode. We'll also hide the human and the remaining proxies. Now we can easily paint the desired vertices black. Now we can disable the mask and see the entire shirt. Okay, not my finest piece of art, but it should be enough to demonstrate the principle. Remember to save the modified image. Now we can save the material with a different name. This time we will keep the list sphere checkbox enabled, as we now have a diffuse texture. In MakeHuman we can select a new material. If it isn't there, just switch to another tab and back, and it should refresh the list. As a summary, if all you want to do is to add some colors to a piece of clothing, texture painting is reasonably easy. You would still need to be able to paint and make it look good, but at least the technology shouldn't be a barrier to get started. A detailed diffuse texture makes a huge difference in how a piece of clothing appears. Most of the time, you'll be better off using texture rather than adding more geometry. So far, we haven't really seen anything different. Materials with a diffuse texture is the usual state of affairs. So, question. How do we make something new and interesting with MakeSkin? Let's take a look at a somewhat more advanced case. Something which it is unlikely you would have achieved before MakeSkin existed. In this part of the tutorial, we'll take a look at using maps and the principal node to get effects which will make things more interesting. If we take a closer look at the glasses here, we can see several things which you won't achieve with a simple diffuse texture. 
Traditionally, you would not see materials with different roughness values on different parts, and the only available kind of transparency has previously been alpha transparency, which does not support index of refraction. Metallicness haven't been supported at all. To begin with, I have created a mask to hide the glass part of the glasses. Taking a look in the UV panel, we can see that the glass part is all in the upper right corner. This means that we don't need to be overly careful when painting the other parts. So let's create a new material. This time, we need to be able to support colors, transmission, different roughness values, and different metallicness. In the shading panel, we can see that all the textures have been hooked up to various sockets of the principled node. The texture nodes are empty placeholders without actual images. So let's create the images and give them default colors which are sane for the glass part of the glasses. We'll later paint the metal part of the glasses with other values. In the texture paint panel, we can choose which texture we want to paint. Let's start with the diffuse texture and paint a yellowish color on the metal parts. Remember to save the image. And the same for roughness. A roughness value of 0.2 is sensible for metal. And the same for metallicness. And for transmission. We have now populated all the texture slots and can render to see how it looks. Looking at how this material looks in MakeHuman, we can again see the difference between a full 3D engine and the primitive preview MakeHuman offers. MakeHuman has no notion of real transmission or metallicness. But, again, if we export this back to Blender, it will look as expected there. Another topic which is very relevant for creating materials is that of normal maps. A good normal map is something which can improve a material from good to excellent. As a short summary, you use normal maps to simulate structure on surfaces without actually changing the geometry. On clothes, you would use this to simulate wrinkles, seams, pockets, buttons and similar, while still being able to have a pretty simple mesh. On skin, you would use this to simulate muscles, wrinkles, moles and similar. I will demonstrate two different approaches in Blender. While it is still possible to use bump maps in many places, many applications consider these old school and deprecated. Thus, I will in the end bake everything as normal maps. Let's begin with the old style and easy case. We want to create a nurse uniform and have a rather simple mesh. Now we want to add some details to it to make it look as if there are seams and borders. We will opt to do this as a bump map, which we will then bake to a normal map. To begin with, 
we will use the same approach as for the diffuse texture painting and add two masks in order to more easily be able to paint. Then we remove the existing material and create a new one with a bump map. In the shading panel, we can create an image for the drawing and give it a dot fire gray so that we can draw both depressions and extrusions. First, we will draw some borders, which are to be raised. Then we will draw two seams. Obviously, you would put more carry to it than this, but this is just to demonstrate the principle. If we now save the image and switch back to the shading panel, we can see that the bump map is used for simulating geometry. Now, the effect is a bit strong, so we will dampen it a bit. As said, bump maps are usually not used in modern applications, so we will convert this to a normal map by baking it. In order to do so, we need to create a new image and save it. Notice that I'm not connecting it to anything. Then we go to the render section and press the bake button to get a normal map. By the way, if the results look very strange here, remove all modifiers from the mesh before baking. Now we can instead create a material that uses the normal map. And having saved it as a McHuman material, we can see the results. Another approach for creating a normal map is sculpting. By sculpting, you can mold a mesh in a clay-like manner. Now, sculpting is a whole science of its own, so I won't get into the details here. There are plenty of YouTube tutorials on how to do sculpting. Anyway, let's start with the default male mesh. We remove all modifiers and instead add a multi-res modifier. Subdivide it a few times so we have enough geometry to move around. Then we enter the sculpt panel and make sure that we are in sculpt mode. Something to keep track of is that you most definitely do not want to use Dune Topo when sculpting with the intention to bake to a normal map. Letting Blender dynamically add vertices will break the UV map. I mention this here because many tutorials on sculpting will tell you to enable this. Dune Topo is a very useful feature when modeling meshes, but not, as I said, when baking normal maps. Anyway, we just mold the mesh in a clay-like manner to our satisfaction. The tools should be self-evident with some experimentation. Getting it to look nice will take a lot of practice though. You get the idea, so I'll just skip ahead to the final sculpt. Now the goal is to bake a sculpt to a normal map. There are a few key things to keep track of here. First the thing which took me days of frustration to figure out. When you bake a sculpt to a normal map, what you bake is the difference between the preview mode and the rendered mode. Thus, if you set the preview subdivisions and the render subdivisions to the same value here, you will get a completely flat normal map. Basically, what you want is to keep the preview at zero and render at the number of subdivisions you used when modeling. The second is that there are multiple ways to bake a sculpt. I will here use a single mesh with a single material which has an unconnected image node in the same way as when we worked with the bump map. In many tutorials, you will instead see that they use two meshes and bake the difference between them. That works too. In the end, baking will give us a normal map, same as with the bump map baking. Texture painting on the skin is the same as texture painting on clothes. 
let's just add something so we can see the difference in make human. Save it in the same directory as the normal map we baked. Now we can create a new material with a diffuse texture and a normal map and use our new textures. Then we save it. Notice that I have saved the material in a subdirectory of the skins directory. And in MakeHuman we can now select the skin. Now, having a cool new material on your own hard drive might be useful. But sharing is caring, and you may also want to give others access to your new material. In order to upload, simply go to the home page and find the material section. Here you can select what asset the new material belongs to, and then upload all the relevant parts. The next time someone synchronizes in the asset downloader, they will be able to find your new material. The last few things I want to show you is how to make MakeSkin play nice with MakeClothes and MPFB. Both MPFB and MakeClothes implement a separate small subset of the image map model. MakeSkin implements most of it. When making this video, the current status is that MakeClothes and MPFB are able to use the model implemented by MakeSkin but only if MakeSkin is installed and enabled. Otherwise, they will fall back to using the limited model. In MakeClothes, simply use the checkbox if you want to use MakeSkin for exporting the material of the clothes. In MPFB, you can find the MakeSkin checkbox on the settings panel. Note that you will have to restart Blender after enabling MakeSkin in order for MPFB to even show this checkbox. Anyway, that is what I had to show you this time. It should be noted that there are a lot of things you can do with materials that I have not shown you yet. If you are curious, I would encourage you to visit the MakeSkin GitHub page and read up on the various image mat settings that are available. But that is it for today. Thank you for listening and happy modeling.